Hey guys, welcome back and happy Saturday. Okay guys, so we're back to talk about some Vanderpump Rules stuff because Alex Baskin, who's one of the, well, an executive producer for Vanderpump Rules and also for the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, he is just all over the place because he has his own podcast that if you were watching the Vanderpump Rules premiere, you would see that there was a QR code on there. I believe it's called like Bravo Hot Mic or something. And he's absolutely killing it. But now in turn, he is promoting his podcast on other Bravo Liberties own podcast. What a cycle. So we're going to play a couple clips for you. We're going to pick your brain a little bit. And then also Kristen Doty's man was hanging out with Tom Sandoval, which is to me so odd. Here we go. Okay, guys, so I wanted to start with this one because I thought it was really, really funny just to kind of kick us off. This guy complains about everything. Hold on. By the way, when I saw Katie and Ariana talking about, you know, wanting to keep the house and the penis flute gluing it back together, I was really really pissed well i think people want to ask why is the penis flute so darn important to because, you because look we got that in mexico somebody like hand sculpted it it's clay it's clay it's not wood yeah. it's clay it's like a flower pot so and it and it came out with us and went around with us like the entire night and it was a part of a hilarious like very memorable awesome part of our show you're narrating it yeah like what happened last night well on a like deeper level, I don't know. Like, and then it shows all these things, and it's like <laughs> whipping you in the face. The penis flew all, and then like that awesome video of like Rihanna watching it and la- like cackling that. her, like cackling at it. Like, yeah, that was a that was an internet sensation. It was. Um, and- it got a headline. And 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 by the way, if anyone's ever been wondering what a classic size penis looks like. Is that classic size? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that is a uh, hog. That is a hog. Okay, well, speaking of Tom Sandoval, before we end up getting into the La La Kent of it all, Kristen Doty, her boyfriend, Luke Broderick, is revealing that he actually hung out with Tom Sandoval, which, what? Kristen Doty's boyfriend, Luke Broderick, sprung a pretty shocking surprise on her, and this was live on air during their podcast, thank you to realitytea.com, while while recording their January 31st episode of their Sex, Love, and What Else Matters podcast, Luke casually dropped a bomb in the conversation, said, you're not going to like this, but I was at Tom Sandoval's house a few days ago, and he mentioned, and Kristen interrupted him, and she interrupted and said, what? And she said, I didn't know that you went over there. So I guess it was an unexpected visit, but Luke explained that he didn't expect to spend time at Tom's house, which obviously um, I don't think any of us did. I was at a bar with another friend. Tom shows up with Kyle Chan, who you'll see on Vanderpump Rules. But this group of guys shows up at the bar, and I was like, holy shit, didn't expect to see them. We played some darts and then decide to go back to Tom's house, and we go back there and hung out for like another hour or two. But Kristen actually realized that the night that Luke met up with Sandoval was the night prior to Sandy's interview on Nick Vile's podcast, The Vile Files. Notably, Tom arrived late for the session and spent most of the interview being dis- defensive about his affair with Rachel Levis. This was the night that you came home late, which means he got so fucked up that he didn't make it to Nick Vile's podcast on time. If you're home before 2, that means that motherfucker's up until like 6 a.m. And he said, Tom's house is sick. So... Luke admitted it wasn't his first visit to Tom and Ariana's sick house. I've been there a bunch of times, but Tom kind of did an additional little tour, which is kind of Tom's MO. Tom likes to put his touch on everything, and he has main character vibes, so I understand why he'd want to try to buy Ariana out of the house. But Tom and Ariana's house, which they purchased together in 2019, has been a huge point of contention since their split back in March. Ariana obviously wants to sell the house, while Tom wants to stay. They both still live in the house, although in separate areas, and have little to no interaction with each other. For his part, Tom believes that the amount of work and money he's invested in the home means he deserves to stay. His ex doesn't feel it's fair for her to have to leave her home while he gets to stay. So hence, there's obviously a standoff. He said, I understand both sides of it. I've gotten to know both of them and they both have been equally nice to me. Mm. 
Kristen said, so you're just basically saying Tom has a bunch of cool LED lights in his house, so you get why he wants to buy it. Look at my cool gym, bro. <laughs> okay. Um, No. I mean, I'm still team Ariana on that one. But wait, I wanted to share this Alala clip with you because this one, this one threw me back. Wait, wait. Replay, replay. that scandal what it was coined was the craziest thing that had happened to our show but it's also kind of the worst thing that happened to our show so when scandal happened and we decided to go into season 11 what were your fears contrary to what certain people in certain quarters have said about that incident um or not that incident that that controversy saving the show the truth is we were making a great show in season 10. And in fact, we had made a great season and it was a bounce back season and the audience was into it. And I felt like it, there's a danger in burning too fast and too brightly. And I also thought that is the one thing that has happened to this group that has threatened to tear it completely apart. Mm. Everything else has been something we've been able to overcome. And I didn't know that we could put the pieces back together. I thought, look, I would trade putting aside all of the human damage and everything else, just purely analytically as a producer, I wish it never happened. Wow. But wait, that I'm shocked by. But this also was interesting because we always wonder how people get cast and how this happens. Who, what are the determining factors? Who makes the decision? How are the decisions made? Yada, 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 yada. Because the interview process, it's just like again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Here we go. Here we go. Let me just share this really quick. Present, share. I have people working in my downstairs right now. Here we go. Your initial impressions of Lala. Did you have a thought of like this girl's not I'm sure a nightmare last, or the way he's looking I would right run now. Away. Like, uh, we <laughs> did I thought, know well, there's my impressions <laughs> from casting and then production. So <laughs> from casting, I thought she was a gem. Right. I thought you were great because I was like, who the fuck is this? So I thought you were one of a kind. You were living in Stassi's bedroom. Like, that was weird. That was very you know? weird. So the whole thing was great. Like, we were all in on that, and I could not quite figure you out. In production, it was a different story because we had never met anyone, like I said, who just was like, nope, not doing it. <laughs> so, it like, so there was that. But you were worth it. You were a pain in the ass, but you were worth it. I mean, you've just changed and matured so much, and you just view it differently, and you're grounded, and different things matter to you. And you're right. much more secure. So you're really not a pain in the ass at this point. Oh, look at that. That's nice, Alex Baskin. She's really not a pain in the ass at this point. Okay. All right, I guess I have a few questions for you. One, what do you think about Kristen's man going back to Tom and Ariana's house and hanging out with Tom, especially knowing Kristen's disdain for Tom Sandoval? Two, okay. Can we... Stop talking about this king penis flute. And three, Alex Baskin joining Lala Kent to talk about not only Scandaval, but also the casting process and him saying that she was a little bit difficult in the beginning. Is that shocking to you? Or could you see that? Because I thought Stassi was really the difficult one. I saw her have some major... I'm not doing shit with production. But go ahead, pop off in the comments, smash that like button, show some love, and we'll see you next time. Love you guys.